Hi DB subscribers and welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is focused specifically on final salary pension transfer costs, where these are going and what you should be doing about it. My name is Dominic James Murray, CEO and founder here at Cameron James, and I've been transferring pensions for over 10 years, so I hope my experience can be valuable for you. Okay, so costs. Everyone hates costs. <laughs> Whether you're working with a lawyer, accountant, a financial advisor, whatever it is, professional service firms have costs and it's frustrating, but it's the way it is when you work in a regulated market. We're not really here today to talk about why the costs are going up and what's happening. We're just here to simply talk about costs. Okay, so when I started uh, my tenure as CEO of Cameron James, the fixed DB report fee was 750 pounds. I remember when this came into play, we were all in the office like, oh my God, this is horrific. How are clients ever gonna stomach paying 750 pounds on top of the normal implementation fee for completing this final salary advice? We, how are we gonna explain this to clients, etc., etc. Clients didn't like it saying, Dominic, hang on a minute, we were working three months ago and you said it was a one, two or 3% transfer fee. Now I have to have this report written to decide whether or not I could, whether or not I should transfer my final salary scheme or not, or whether or not it's in my best interest. And we say, yes. Clients say, okay, fine, whatever, get it done. Then it'd be like if they had a second or third pension pot, sometimes it was added on for 250 pounds or 500 pounds, so 1.25K, which at the time seemed such a huge amount of money to have a report for two final salary schemes. Fast forward to where we are now in 2022, anyone would snap an advisor's hand off um, for these prices. So really what I'm trying to explain is if we started off at 750 pounds, over the course of the years, uh, since 2015, when the first legislation came in place, we've seen the gradual and steady increase of these report fees. Normally on a monthly or a quarterly basis in my inbox as CEO, I get an email from the pension transfer specialist saying, dear Dominic, kindly note our updated fee schedule, which will go into place in 30 days from now or 60 days from now. If you have any current clients you're working with, please ensure to try and get them in between this date or at least ensure all their terms and conditions are signed before so that we can honor um, the cheaper charging schedule. Now, some of you might be saying, oh yeah, they're ramping up the cost, trying to make as much money as possible. Not really. It's coming down to the costs that are increasing in the industry, the PI insurance, if even staying to be able to give authorized DB advice. Um, if you read the Financial Times, you will see the number of authorized DB advice firms in the UK has dropped from 3,000 in 2018 down to around 1,000 um, at the time of recording. The reason for this is most firms are trying to get out of the market. It's getting way too litigatious and it's getting way too expensive to stay in the market. The only firms that are staying in the market are the ones that are in it for the long haul and are saying, fine, we'll pay the cost, we'll pay the insurance, because this is a big part of our business and we want to continue working and giving clients uh, final salary advice. So if we look at 750 uh, up to where we are today in 2020, I would say the average fixed DB report fee, which doesn't include implementation of the transfer, is around 3,500 to 4,000 pounds. So if you look at that inflation over the course of that period from 750 to 3,500 to 4,000 pounds, it's a huge increase over that period of time. So where are we gonna be in five years from now? I would say, if final salary pension transfers are still allowed and the statutory right to transfer final salary pension still exists in five years time, I could easily see a DB fixed report fee being 10,000 pounds in five years time, plus possibly the implementation charge of the financial advisory firm working and facilitating that pension transfer. You have to remember that you have to have a non-contingent uh, charging system. So that means the DB report that's written, the fee for that has to be paid irrespective of whether the advice is to transfer or not and irrespective of whether you transfer or not. Some advisory firms will package this cost all into one go. Maybe they're writing the report and they're gonna be advised on the implementation. So they might charge you, for example, uh, 14,000 uh, pounds for the pension transfer, or you might work with a company such as here at Cameron James, where we charge you three or 4,000 pounds, three and a half to 4,000 pounds for the initial report, then a 1% implementation charge if the advice of the report is to proceed with a transfer um, of your pension. So what I'm basically saying here is be careful with your pension DB assets. If you're sitting on the fence, you're concerned about cost and you're thinking, oh, three and a half grand or four grand for a fixed report fee or whether you're paying with the implementation all in one and you can't, the outcome of the report, you have to pay the fee whether you go ahead or not. What you have to understand is these costs are probably only going to get more expensive. I do have, I have never heard of a PI insurer saying, oh, your PI insurance or DB advice is going to go down next year because we think it's a less uh, litigatious area of the market and we think it's less risky. No, 
it's completely the opposite. So be careful. If you're trying to wait and think, oh, maybe the regulation is going to go away, maybe it's going to get cheaper in future years. Um, I can't say hand on heart, but out of my experience, I would say the answer is no. The chart is going in one direction in terms of cost. So if you think a pension transfer might be suitable for you or you want to explore your options, I would advise beginning a process, whether it's with ourselves or whichever financial advisory firm you think is most reputable um, to look after your interests, get the report process in motion because the costs are only going to go higher um, and then you're going to feel frustrated that you didn't transfer um, at an earlier point. For example, I had a client um, that I was speaking with very recently who was very annoyed. Uh, he did a 1.9 million pound pension transfer of myself. When we were transferring out of the Volvo uh, construction scheme, he also had an extremely small defined benefit uh, second pot there of about 37,000 pounds. At the time, the client said to me, what should I do with the second pot? And I was like, well, just it's another 250 pounds for the report. Just get it done. Trust me, it'll be a massive pain for you later in life. Or, you know, leave it there if you want. It's really up to you. You're transferring 1.9 million. So leaving 37 something in the pot doesn't make sense to me. But by that stage, the transfer process had gone on for so long. I was like, do whatever you want. If you don't want us to look at the second one, we won't look it for you. I advise you to. The client said, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to pay the extra 250 pounds. Last month, the client said to me, Dominic, can you look into that DB scheme for me again? And I said to him, you do realize that the fixed report fee is now 3,500 pounds. And the client nearly lost it. And he was like, how is that physically possible? It's 10% of the value of the pension. And I said, exactly. Here at Cameron James in Europe, we have a 250,000 pound minimum DB transfer CETV size. So typically under 250,000 pounds, it's very difficult for us to give DB advice because the cost is so high. If you have a pension pot of 100,000 pounds in a DB and the fixed report fee is 3,500, it's already quite a large percentage. It's 3.5% of the pot value at 100,000 pounds, which would actually make transferring the pension very expensive. That doesn't necessarily make it unsuitable for the client to make a transfer, but it does make it um, uh, pretty expensive. So uh, back to the main point, if you've got DBs and you want to consider your options, don't wait. Don't wait to 2023, 2004, 2025. A lot of people also say, well, I'm going to wait until my, uh, my 55th birthday when I could access the money from a SIP. Yes, that is good financial planning because until you reach the age of 55, whether you remain inside your DB scheme or whether you transfer out to a SIP, you won't actually be able to access any of the money until the age of 55 inside a SIP. Obviously, you could potentially have the advantage of managing the pot and trying to outperform your DB, but obviously past performance is no guide to future performance. Uh, uh, returns is not guaranteed. But the crucial factor, remember, is if you're 51 now and you're thinking, hmm, why don't I wait until age 55? I'll then have all the indexation, the inflation linking, the guaranteed growth of my scheme up until the very last minute, and then I will transfer out into a SIP. Could be good financial planning advice because you get all the extra benefits from um, your seeding scheme. But how much is final salary pension transfer advice going to cost in four or five years from now? It could be very, very expensive. The cost of, or an increase in that cost could outweigh the extra benefits that you've accrued from the scheme. You would obviously need to do a proper calculation and see what you think works best for you. Guys, costs, final salary pension schemes, they're not going down. They're only going up. Um, I hope this has been a valuable video for you today. As always, uh, book in below for a conversation with myself or just feel free to reach out to me via email with your situation uh, and what you're looking to achieve and we'll uh, give you some feedback and get you booked in for a free initial consultation. Guys, as always, take care with your final salary pension schemes and I look forward to speaking with you soon.